Today we're talking career transitions. So when I left behind my life as a professional ballet dancer after like 20 years to go into the world of business, the fear of leaving behind the only world that I've ever known was really, really scary. Even though it was my own choice to quit dancing and I had also prepared myself as well as possible, I was still scared to death about this major shift in life because I thought that I would lose Use my sense of identity and also security. And when I shared my own career transition in this video over here, I was flooded with messages from so many of you guys going through exactly the same situation. And I think this is a problem that a lot of people have. It's the fear of change. Even if we know it's time to move on from something, we have all sorts of fear and doubt and also we don't want to let go of this comfort. We're scared about the unknown and also the loss of security and the fear of losing this identity that's probably tied to a certain position or profession. And this leaves us trapped in the never-ending cycle. So if this is something that you are experiencing and if you feel completely trapped and unable to make a change, just keep watching because I was exactly in the same situation a couple of years ago until I told myself, Sayaka, enough is enough. Like, you need to make a change. And so today in this video, I'm gonna share with you how I made that big career transition with these six mindsets over here and how you can also make that smooth career change as well. If you are new here, oh, welcome to my channel. My name is Sayaka and I'm a Harvard graduate ballerina turned entrepreneur. And in this video, I will share with you how I shifted careers from dancing ballet all my life then going to Harvard, and then becoming an entrepreneur and working in the business world. And hopefully the strategies that I will share with you today can help you embrace change and also guide you towards a new career pathway if you feel the need to do so. So without further ado, let's dive right in. Number one, minimize chaos. So when I was lost with my career, one of the first things that I actually did was I went to the Harvard Career Service to get some advice. And I actually had absolutely no expectations, but she gave me a really golden tip. And so she explained to me that when it comes to a job, there are three main factors. That's position, location and company, and then industry. Her advice was the key to ensuring a smooth career transition was to change only one of these factors at a time. So in my case, I was working as a ballerina at Theater Dortmund in Germany in the art industry. So if I wanted to transition smoothly and minimize chaos in my life, I would only choose one of these factors. So in my scenario, I decided to stay at the same company at Theater Dortmund in the same city in Germany. I was still then also in the art industry, but then I just changed my position from being a ballerina to becoming a manager. So just one of these factors. This helped me a lot because I was still in the arts industry where I understood how things functioned because of my own experience as a dancer. And I was also at the same company, at the same location where I had already established this network and developed trust with all sorts of people. Like I knew them, but they knew me, like they knew my weaknesses, also my strengths as well. So it was much, much easier to adapt into this new lifestyle. People are much more forgiving and understanding when they know you. And when you're going through such a big career change in your life, you need all the support that you get. And I'm really, really happy that I got the support and I'm grateful for that because I stayed in the same company. And so by only changing one of these factors, this minimized the amount of chaos in my life. And I was able to make this smooth transition. If I had, for example, moved to a completely new city in a completely new industry, in a completely new job, like I would have been totally lost. So to avoid this, minimizing chaos is absolutely key when it comes to career transitions. So if you're trying to make a career change, 
Think about changing only one of these three factors at a time. Number two, understand that career paths are messy. No matter how well you plan, you will never figure it all out until you actually try. So I can speak for myself. I knew I couldn't dance forever. So I started preparing like seven years in advance for my second career. You know, I started studying at a university. I gained as much work experiences uh, outside of the ballet world, you know, in consulting and also building companies. I was trying to establish, you know, and develop my network. And despite all of that, I was still scared to death when it actually came to leaving. I was so full of shame and doubt and fear. I had absolutely no clear what I was doing. I was like, what if it all doesn't work out? What if I'll be completely worthless without the ballet world? But of course, I put on this brave face like I had everything under control in the first couple of months especially because like otherwise you just wouldn't survive in a cutthroat world. You can't show your insecurity and this sucks but I'm telling you that nobody has it all figured out. Like behind that brave face everybody is scared no matter what they say. It feels like everybody has everything perfectly figured out in their lives and you are the only one trying to figure things out. But guarantee you, it's not like that. Career paths are messy. People's lives are messy. Number three, understand that change is constant. Even if you figured it all out in your next career, you would still have to find your own way because there is no constant state in life. Whether it's changes in your personal relationships or career paths or, you know, life circumstances, this is why adaptation is key. There is a very interesting book about this called Life is in the Transitions by Bruce Thaler, subtitled Mastering Change at Any Age. I would highly recommend this if you are going through any sort of change in life. Uh, this was really, really helpful for me during my transitional phase. It helped me a lot and so highly recommend. So Failure talks about two types of challenges we face in life. Those are disruptors and those are life breaks. So disruptors are things that happen in our daily lives. This would be like changing jobs or getting married. They're not necessarily negative changes, but they're still disruptive. And his data show that we experience an average of three dozen disruptors in our adult lives. So this is basically one every 12 to 18 months. On the other hand, there are sometimes disruptors that are so huge that it leads us to a chaotic state, which he calls life quakes because it literally feels like an earthquake in your life, right? Not only does it feel like the world turns upside down, but it also leads to years and years of emotional chaos afterwards. And the unique thing about life quakes is that it forces us to self-reflect. It forces us to reassess our lives and rethink who we are as a person. And Thaler says that most people have about three to five of these massive life quakes in their lives. And each life quake can last for about five years each. So this basically means that we spend a lot of time in our lives dealing with some sort of big change. So the key takeaway is we shouldn't wait until we get some sort of stability in our lives because there will always be instability. Even when you feel like you found your dream career, life will just throw you all sorts of obstacles. So the most important thing is to be able to navigate these situations, not avoid them. Number four, realize that uniqueness is your asset. So I know a lot of people who are scared to make the leap of faith in their career because they feel like they don't have enough experience or something. But the thing is, in a competitive market, like in the business field, being unique absolutely matters. So let me tell you a story. Back in 2018, when I was a ballet dancer and I was holding a lecture in Tokyo, I was expecting, you know, a lot of young girls aspiring to become dancers or their parents to come and listen to me talk. But when I opened the room, I was completely shocked because most of these people who were sitting there were male, 
like twice my age and businessmen. And I was like, what is going on here? Like, why? <laughs> and so I asked a couple of these people why they were here. And they told me that they wanted a fresh perspective from somebody who comes from a totally different world in order for them to change their lives. They've already been to all the business strategy seminars already. And yet here they were, they were still struggling with all kinds of professional and personal problems. And so they wanted insights on how to set and achieve goals and targets from a person who comes from a completely different industry. And who knows better about motivation, discipline, and goals than professional dancers and athletes, right? So that was a point where I realized that Wow, like my ballet experience could benefit a completely different industry depending on how you looked at it. I always thought that my ballet experience was a liability in the ballet world, but it's not. It's an asset. So do not sell yourself short just because you don't have the experience or the network. There is a high chance that you bring value to the table because of your unique background. Number five. When in doubt, zoom out. So when we feel uncertain or overwhelmed, it can really be easy to get lost in the small details of our daily lives. So for me, it felt like the end of my ballet career was the end of everything at that point when I was retiring. But it's really important at that moment to take a step back and look at the bigger picture in your life. So a simple exercise that I like to do when I get lost is to write my own biography in third perspective from the day I was born up until my childhood up until now and this is a really helpful exercise because it forces you to just like zoom out and take a look at the bigger picture rather than like focusing on the small details of life another reason why it's so helpful is because it's writing your own story it forces you to understand that you control your own narrative and many of the times you can rewrite your story with a happier ending. This will make you realize that the problems that you face today are just a small component to a bigger puzzle. Which leads me to my last point, number six. Do first, think later. Take action first and figure the rest later. I know a lot of people who become scared and indecisive when they're lost and that is really understandable. But if you are in that situation, it is really important to understand that decisions are not about making the right decision, so to speak. It is about trusting your ability to handle any outcome even if that decision that you make today might be the wrong decision. We won't know what the right decision is until we pick something. So God damn it, just pick something. Better to take action than absolutely no action. Because here's the thing, there are so many different pathways that you can actually take to achieve your ultimate goal, right? So for example, I was quitting ballet. I was really scared that I would be stuck in an office all day and not be creative anymore. But that ballet was not the only way to be creative and express myself. I could express myself through so many different forms of art, like modeling, like painting, like piano, like I could make YouTube videos, right? I could write, like there are so many different ways of creativity and self-expression and ballet is one form of that. And this way of thinking made it so much easier for me to let go of ballet and it will be the same for you. This is why it's really important to recognize that this is just a phase in your life. It is one chapter in your story. Oftentimes you have to close the door in order to open a new one. All right, you guys, that is it for today. Thank you so much for watching until the end if you have made it this far. And I hope that the insights that I shared with you today here are helpful with your career change and also provide some clarity or inspiration for your own career and journey. If you're interested to learn more about career changes, I have a video over here that you can watch about why I quit dancing and the thought process behind my decision to leave the ballet world. Uh, I analyzed the five different reasons why we work in the first place, so I think it will be helpful. I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye!